What is up guys? So as we all know, technologies are never stopping and the one from today is not an exception. And I'm talking about Devin. You may have heard about it already or have not. So basically it's the first AI software engineer. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look into what it's actually like and what we know about it so far. So enjoy. So if we go to the Twitter of company cognition, here we'll be able to see some of their posts that are breaking the internet at the moment. Quick preview of what Devin is able to do. Let's take a look together. Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example of Devin in action. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. So we, what first, we can see so far already in this video that this would be like a website, similar to ChatGPT, but it's more like playground where you can just see logs and the process of your prompt being executed. So basically in this video, they are showing that, okay, it'll have a browser access, it'll have its own CLI, and we'll be able to see the code. But basically we're still working with it in a similar way as we would work with ChatGPT via a chat, where we can ask a questions, see the progress, and then get the final result, which is still kind of cool. Devin actually decides to add a debugging print statement. So I think the very cool part about it is that they train it to be able to console log the data. So then it can basically go through a loop of seeing the data, testing the result and so on. It already looks similar to what a real developer would do at this point. So what we can see from this chart is that it is going further than GPT-4 and other models but it's still 13% of real world software engineer performance, which I think is being made of how much unit test coverage is there. And 13% is still pretty nice. After seeing this video, actually I'm thinking right away about the previous startups that I've seen in the past where basically they combined executions, what they call them actions with GPTs. So basically it's where your AI is executing some things and then finishes once all of the planned work is accomplished. So it's kind of similar to what we are seeing here where it first creates the plan and then goes through it. So it is similar to actions because they're also creating the plan where they're making step-by-step -step progress and uh, updating the map as they go. But this is more towards the coding specifically, which is kind of promising. And here in the comments, they also gave us some examples. So first example is that there is an app that creates images with the text hidden in the images. So kind of like, and you can see here is Sarah. They gave an example of a blog post that was talking about how it is possible to be made. And then basically it went through the blog post, it found all the documentation, it created the code, it found some errors, created a website that is actually able to generate stuff like this. And it gave the image in this video to try. So, and this is what it generated which is actually pretty impressive. So you can basically just feed the blog article, which explains on how to do something and then it'll execute it. So the second example is that it can contribute to bigger repos. So basically like a GitHub Copilot would understand the context of the code and the code base, and then based on that, it will try to help, which is pretty cool. The third example is that it can train itself. So it's kind of like Devin will create its own version in the future, which will be better. But I'm pretty sure that they're still, the company Cognition is still not working with Devin to create Devin. They're probably having a lot of very smart software engineers in the end of the day. And the fourth example is that they found a basic example of a job from Upwork and it was able to complete it. And in that case, it would make some money but I don't know how much of cherry picking it is here. Let's be honest here. They probably selected a task on Upwork. They were pretty sure they can accomplish. I mean, I'm not making any claims, but this is just a very small example. So it's pretty hard to judge at this point. And as the reference, they left a link to their blog. So let's take a quick look. This is actually how their website looks like so far. So pretty basic. They didn't hesitate even to <laughs> create a cool website for them with like a proper landing page and a very basic blog with one post so far. And right now they have this wait list, which is a Google form. 
this still is not publicly accessible and basically we don't know how much of it is just a hype but yeah how many ai technologies in the past that were very promising but they turned out to be okay and did not revolutionize the whole market but at the same time there are apps like chat gpt that actually is now strongly embedded in a lot of people lives and their work so my take on this would be that so far even with what i see with the previews it will not replace the actual developers especially in big it companies because most of their tasks are actually pretty challenging and I think we're still a bit too early for managers just to be super clear with their instructions. So I think to give like a lot of technical instructions that will still need to be a developer that will be fitting like smart prompt in it to give some decent results. And maybe only after some time we'll get somewhere good with like more complex examples. So it seems to be at this point more of a threat for junior developers for basic tasks on the website. For example, if you have an existing code base and later you will use their product and you'll want to change a text in the button and you just prompt it, I think it will be easily able to do so. But if you have quite complex combinations of backend and frontend working together, maybe it'll be easier for a human to just figure stuff out on its own instead of giving a huge prompt with explaining every single step on how you want it to be done especially if it's a big it company they will just not let all kind of code path through but yeah let me know what do you think in the comments will it replace developers will it just make their life even better or are we just now gonna be in the loop of ai creating another ai that will create another ai which will then create a skynet and it'll be a question if we're gonna survive or not so yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next one peace